your thoughts are so, so powerful, truly with anything. So I think, you know, with anything that you're doing, if you believe that what you're doing is working, whether it's mistletoe or IVC or off-label drugs, it will work if, if you believe it will. Welcome to Gut Check Radio. I'm Nick Belden, a chiropractic physician and functional medicine practitioner. The information provided in this podcast is for educational entertainment purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, cure, or treat any disease and do not apply any of the information here without first speaking with your physician. You hope it's one of those things where when people listening to this hear that, they feel a sense of like, oh, like these are things I can do versus I imagine there's a subset of people who want to be told um, you just need this surgery or this radiation, or they want it to seem, because maybe to them that sounds easier than having to completely change their moral foundation and their mindset to, th to then think positively. Like if you've been a, a, a negative Nancy, if there's anyone named Nancy listening, I'm sorry, your whole life to then hear that being positive is helpful might actually be harder, might be the hardest thing for you to grasp and then shift and it'd be easy for you to just take your chemotherapy and radiation and, and move on with your life. Hope yeah. potentially. Yeah. There's even tunic. I mean, are you familiar with Bruce Lipton by any chance? Yeah. Biology belief. Fantastic. Book. He has yeah. highly, highly recommend that book for anyone listening. And yeah, I mean his whole, he, he's like the pioneer of this whole area. I mean, he's been preaching this for years and years. I, I don't agree with everything he says, but there is a lot of power in terms of like, again, how your biology reacts to your thoughts. And a great example of this is there was a study done not too long ago where patients were given, um, or rather they split a group of patients into two groups, right? So one group received chemotherapy, the other group didn't. And in the group that did not receive chemo, but thought they were, it was just a saline solution. I think it was like 70% of them lost their hair just because mm. they believed that they were receiving chemotherapy, which mm. is just mind blowing. Right. And I think, again, the more I read, the more I'm like, it's not necessarily the treatment itself, although that plays a big role. It's more of what you think of the treatment. Right. So even if a patient does, you know, decide to pursue chemotherapy, they need to think of that chemo as like liquid gold, right? That's going into their bodies, like killing the cancer, not harming their healthy cells. And that's what it will do, right? If that's what you think. Same thing with food. If you're eating something and you're thinking, oh, this is so bad for me, it's you, you and I were chatting about this on my podcast with the whole gluten thing, right? Like if you eat gluten and you have this, preconception that gluten's bad for you after you have that piece of bread you're going to be like i'm a wreck i have brain fog i'm breaking out in hives and it's like well is that really the gluten or is that your perception and your thoughts of what the gluten is doing to your body right and i know like dr axe is like he's been talking about about this for a while too but it's your thoughts are so so powerful truly with anything so i think you know with anything that you're doing, if you believe that what you're doing is working, whether it's mistletoe or IVC or off-label drugs, it will work if if you believe it will. So mm. I think everyone listening should go back and replay that last 120 to 180 seconds, because if you are to start anywhere with your health, or if you are a, a wreck and you need a place to turn, th that that belief effect is where you should start. And 100%. yeah, and what I was saying earlier about placebo versus belief is the belief effect is the idea that your physiology actually changes. So even in a study you mentioned, people lost less hair or they lost more hair because they thought that's not placebo, that's objective versus placebo is you feel, say people have fatigue and they feel better. Well, that's placebo. But if they have fatigue and their inflammatory markers get, get better, that's physiologic change. That's belief. So you can have, you can yeah. use the two of those and- Anytime I hear things about this, I, it's hard for me to reconcile, like, why do we even study IV vitamin C, probiotics, supplements, nutrition? Why do we eat, spend so much time studying that stuff if the belief is just as, if not more powerful than the actual modality? I know. That's yeah. the golden question. I mean, I think to answer that, I think, so for example, if you take like IVC, those studies will hopefully show and many have the benefits of IVC, right? Boosting your immune system, like increasing NK cell activity, your natural killer cells, which are so, so important for cancer patients. And I think once a patient sees those studies, right, it's kind of like, 
it feeds into that belief system, right? So if you read a study that's done on IBC and you see all these positive effects, then when you yourself are doing it, your body's going to react to those effects, right? By what you're reading. So I feel like there needs to be some type of tangible evidence or sense that something works in order for someone to believe it, right? And I mean, again, like that's the whole premise of faith too, right? Mm. Like you have to you know, believe in what you can't see. But I think in medical you know, in the medical world, at least what I've seen is there has to be some type of tangible, hopeful, positive outcome that patients need to see in order to have that sense of belief that it's going to work. 